Thank others, and you too shall be thanked. Save up some cash and buy a massage chair. When Sleepy comes out as Sweepy, that means you're tired. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play D4. Last time, we found a new memento, the baseball, that uh, David Young and Antonio Zapatero had used back on the airplane. It's a new memento, and we can use it to dive back to, well, I guess we'll see where exactly it is we go when we use it. But before we go, I figured we'd change our clothes again. Since now we're hot on the trail of whatever it is that's happening here with Zapatero, I figured we should dress into something a bit more appropriate. We've dressed into the FBI special agent clothes. It's a certain FBI special agent clothes, as you can see from the description. And, uh, I think with that we should get some appropriate facial hair going on. I mean, we know exactly what it is that an FBI agent has in terms of facial hair. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. Only a real, a dedicated FBI special agent gets facial hair like this. And that's what we have. And I don't know what's happening with the lighting on David Young there. I'm not sure. But that's what we're going to do as we get down and dirty with this investigation. Not to mention that the other characters also have their own Deadly Premonition themed clothes. So everyone's dressed to go. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's head back to the bathroom. Yet let's use that baseball and see where we get to when we try to dive with it. David! <laughs> you can't change the past. Facing the past changes your perception of it. This memento, it's the same. You didn't change the past. Just how you perceive Petty, it. Petty, you always help me out. Thanks, partner. Hey, David! Uh, Teddy, I'm sorry. No matter what you say, I'm not giving up. I'm gonna find Dee and save her life. That's why I need the courier's evidence. Olivia. Uh, um. So, we're below the seats now. Blood stains? What happened after the lightning strike? Huh. Olivia. Don't move. How did you get down here? Just who the hell are you? Hmm. Well, we know that Olivia is more than she seems. Her gun is evidence of that, if nothing else. I guess let's go with what she originally thought David Young was. 
The name's David Young. I want to chat with the courier. You DEA might think of me as a stowaway, but I'm not your enemy. You think I'll buy that? <laughs> That's up to you. Delta calling Eagle. Delta calling Eagle. The Federal Marshal, Derek Buchanan, got my gun. He's taking the target. <laughs> The marshal's moving the courier, and we need to get up there. I said don't move! I'm leaving. Move back again and I'll shoot! No, you won't. I can't let you go. There's something I have to do. Oh. Ah! I'll share my shoulder, if you'll share your radio and gun. A temporary ceasefire. Can I trust you? Like I said, that's up to you. Alright, it looks like we... This is the space below the passenger seating. If we move between the luggage, we'll be able to reach below the cockpit. It looks like... Now let's oh. hurry and catch up to them. Alright, let's do it. It looks like we have a temporary uh, truce with Olivia Jones. And we got one clue out of... It says six pieces remaining. So we're back in another investigation area. We have to find more clues and figure out what's going on here. We heard that uh, what sounded like Philip Cheney was on the radio referring to himself as Delta. And Olivia here is Eagle. It says that she hurt her foot and can barely stand. Something I didn't think about is that with this uniform on, the, uh, with, the, with the jeans, you can't actually see her ankle, which looks like it's been burned. Uh, maybe I'll just splice in what that footage looks like in her flight attendant uniform here. All right, so let's go on. Let's move out and see what we can find. Let's look around. Well, here's a ladder that goes up. I don't have time for this right now. Looks like we can't do anything with it. Push that, though. That's saying something. I can't really hear it. But what we did hear is that Derek Buchanan took Cheney's gun and apparently Derek has taken Antonio and is moving him. Hmm, let's see what this is. Signed, but we can't really read it because of all the dirt, so let's wipe it off. So does this mean that uh, Derek Buchanan was actually the one that spirited Antonio away? Sounds like Philip is going after them trying to get him back. But why would Derek do that? So much dirt on this. Just gotta get all of it off. <laughs> Look for D. I know. I know. Fight, David. Little Peggy. Wait. Am I supposed to see the world in 4D? Hmm. Maybe an alternate meaning of what look for D could mean. 
That still seems like it would be kind of a tough thing to figure out, though. No sense in looking through other people's luggage. But we're gonna do it anyway. I mean, I know that Peggy was dying and all that, but... I think that if that's what she meant, she would have tried to make it a little clearer. Let's look in this bag. Oh, I guess we know whose bag we're looking through. And it looks like Duncan does like Calorie Biscuit. Uh, he won't miss it, though. Me. Almost forgot about that. Let's see if uh, Olivia has any thoughts on what's been going on here. Looking closely? The differences become quite clear. But she still bears a strong resemblance to little Peggy. Uh, is... something the matter? Well, let's just keep moving. It's true that she does look almost exactly like little Peggy, and we really, as of yet, don't know why that is. That seems like it couldn't be a coincidence. Roland did say something about how David is matching his thoughts, his memories of Peggy, overlaying them onto Olivia. But we don't actually know what that means. Expensive tequila. Yep, just what we want. Well, I mean, whoever owns this won't miss it. Clearly, with all this going on, all the stuff that's been going on in the airplane, a little missing luggage won't, won't hurt anyone. Oh. I think we know whose this is. Then there was that thing that Kaysen said, that David can't change the past. He can just change the way he sees the past. There is some question on what is the nature of these dives. What does that say? Donald Afro hair. Some kind of hairspray? I don't know why Deborah would need that. Oh, and there are all her notebooks all lined up. Well, we, I guess we don't have any time to actually take a look at them. Huh? Gas is spurting out. All right. I guess this is probably how Olivia burned her ankle. So, hey, let's cover it up. That should do it. Always good to put a lid on dangerous things. Sure, that chewing gum will do the job. Why not? Just gonna push this... Like, dinosaur skull? Or something? Don't know why it's here, but we'll just push it as much as we can. For money. What do we got here? We got durians? Uh, push them! Get them out of here! Smash those durians! Well, I hope whoever owns those durians won't come looking for them, because they're going to be disappointed. Shouldn't have left, left them loose, anyway. That should do it. Always good to put a lid on dangerous things. That's a good thing we have an unlimited supply of chewing gum with which to do that. It won't open. What does Olivia think about all this? She's putting a brave face on. That's gotta really hurt. She's tougher than I thought. I'm okay. This is nothing. No need to worry about me. Let's just hurry on, shall we? 
All right, but looking in that direction, I realized I just missed something. Just walked right over this little trap door right here. Let's see what's being kept underneath. Good usage of limited space. All right, we have a few things, actually. Credit. Well, we have a scrapbook, an academic journal. It's well known, so let's see, what is that? Specific medicine and devilish medicine, all, both of those being one word each. Those must be the official terminologies for, for, those, for those things. All right, what's it about? It's about, uh, let's see, from healing drug to devil's play thing. Many of the drugs that are now illegal, including cocaine, heroin, and LSD, were originally used in the medical treatment of serious diseases or afflictions. For example, heroin was once used as a painkiller, and LSD has been used as a psychotropic drug for the treatment of various psychological conditions. It's also well known that, less than 100 years ago, everyone loved a certain fizzy drink that contained elements of cocaine. However, it is also well known that the reckless use of these drugs can lead to life-threatening symptoms or severe addiction, and only a small section of them are now used for medical purposes. Regular people using these drugs with no specialist knowledge can, it goes without saying, be incredibly dangerous. People in the grip of an especially strong addiction will resort cri they will resort criminal acts, including mugging, murder, and robbery, in order to get their next fix. This means that additional caution is required if you come into contact with such people in the course of providing them with treatment. Medicine forges ahead every single day. Some drugs which have been used in the past for the treatment of disease have now have been discovered to have unexpected side effects and can no longer be used. It is important for us to always remember that powerful medicinal drugs can also lead to dangerous addictions. Alright, so it seems to be about how drugs can lead to addictions, which is, that's no secret, we all know that, and how dangerous this can be, and how it can lead people to commit acts of desperation to get the drugs they so need. That seems to be all there is under there. But up here, maple syrup flavored baked beans. Mm, restores so much of her stamina. It's caught on something. I have to free it up somehow. Alright. Push that out of the way. Why... Would the Marshal take Antonio Zapatero hostage? I have no idea. You're one to talk anyway. Seems like you'll do just about anything for your investigation. Are you really just a private detective? I'm going after the courier at the request of the BPD. The BPD? Your people asked for the cooperation. I wasn't aware of that. I'm <laughs> sorry. I meant, we'll ask. Huh? Hmm, looks like we got a clue. Not sure what that was about. But David probably shouldn't play so fast and loose with, uh... the idea that this stuff has already happened. Doesn't really make sense to... to the normies that he's talking to. Alright, let's just open this up. I'm sure Olivia doesn't mind us breaking open all this luggage and taking what's inside. Hey, it's just all in the line of duty, right? Hmm, water. What does she think about this? Well, well. <laughs> what are you looking at? Yeah, that happens if we look at her too much. I guess the game is making assumptions on why we are looking at Olivia so much, and we do lose a heart of health.
shit! Uh, it's no good. Can't get it open. Okay, we've got to find the flashlight. Very well. Let's do that. All right, we're in this dark cargo hold. We have to figure out where the flashlight is, but we can't really see anything. Fortunately, we can do this. There's an owl in here. I'm gonna push that owl. Owl's gone. Where did the owl go? I don't know, but there is something down here. Found it. The flashlight bulb. <laughs> Alright, that's one piece. Also grab some other stuff. Like some jelly beans and some energy drink. Uh, whoever owns those won't miss them. We can also push Olivia. Don't. Hey! Don't touch me there! We can harass Olivia in the dark if you are so inclined. But we probably should get down to business and look for the pieces of the flashlight. Here's something that looks like it might be it. Found it! This tube must be the body of the flashlight. We found the flashlight, but still no batteries. They might have rolled back behind all the junk in here. <sighs> then we'll never find them. Let's look for something we can use instead. Yes, okay. All right, so we won't find the batteries, probably, but is there anything else we can use? Well, we do see something that is giving off a light, and not this. I mean, that kind of just looks like not the kind of batteries we are looking for. What about this? That's it. The radio. The radio runs on batteries. Let's get out of here. What do you think I am? Your girlfriend? It is true that David really does need to try to get under control with these hallucinations and seeing little Peggy all the time. I know he wants to see her, but probably should be a little bit concerned about it. If we turn around, there's a, a credit in there. Let's just take that and head into this room. All right, let's look around. What do we have? We have a machine. We have a cat. The cat, of course, can be pushed. And there are other animals in the cages here. Hmm, poking at the wall. Hmm, can't hear anything coming from that one. But it is squirting ink. Smells like fertilizer in there. Seems like a bunch of animals being transported on this flight. And over here, we see gleaming eyes in the dark. The puppy does not appreciate us pushing the cage, and I can imagine it doesn't. All right, there's a door over there, and another machine in the back. Looks like those gunshots came from here. 
The machinery section is through there. Looks like the door is locked. So there was a skirmish here, and then he ran further inside. Doesn't look like the power is getting here. Damn it. <sighs> Almost got it. Huh? Okay? Olivia, did you see that guy? See who? What did you see? Things are worse than I thought. Hmm, we've completed a piece of evidence called Another D, and we saw a hulking figure at the end of that corridor. David and Olivia think that this room is where Philip was calling from when apparently Derek was shooting at him. And we do see blood or something all around here. But this door is locked. We can't get through. And we have to figure that uh, probably Derek and Antonio went through the door with Philip right behind and some other maybe familiar looking figure in there as well. But I guess, hold on. If we lean to the to one side, yeah, we can see a golden emblem right there. Just pick that up, even though I'm not getting anything for it now. All right, there's another machine over there, and there's a back room over here. Let's look all around before we actually start interacting with anything. All right, what do we got? Well, lots of magazines, including, let's see, a History of Movie, the 21st Century Space Travel, Leonard's Adventure, and The Moth. Oh, Neptune, God of Ocean. Let's read all about it. All right, this is about uh, film history, or is, as it's said in the book, history of movie. In 1895, the first ever live-action footage was screened by the Lumiere brothers. The images they showed enthralled all who saw them, and quickly developed into a new form of popular entertainment. This was the beginning of the long history of film. As the medium evolved, running times became longer, and stories were added. In 1927, sound was finally added. It was the birth of the so-called talkie. Color film came along fairly soon after that, but it was a while before color movies really took hold. This was followed by the development of special photography techniques, computer graphics, and other technology, eventually leading us to modern movie production. However, the history of film also has its darker, sadder moments. Film has been used as a tool of politicians or propaganda, and there was a time when creative freedom was curtailed. War and the destruction of art have led to the loss of many irreplaceable works. However, the medium of film has overcome all of these obstacles and stands as one of the representative forms of entertainment in our modern times. This is the result of the tireless hard work of everyone who has supported the film industry throughout its history, and their spirit is carried into the upcoming generation of new talent. All right, talking about the hardships and tribulations the movie industry has had over the years. Now let's see, what's this about over here? Lightning conspiracy theory against the government, doppelganger, Milky Lake monster found, and feature of paranormal. I'm interested in this lightning conspiracy theory against the government. Oh man. A government conspiracy? It's the terrifying truth behind man-made lightning. We have received terrifying information for a credible source. This information provides the full and terrible details of the American government's weather control weapon, which allows the top U.S. brass to cause lightning strikes anywhere in the world. More than 5,000 people have already been the victims of this diabolical device. Our source is a highly regarded meteorologist, Mr. K. 
assume name. Mr. K reveals that the American government developed this device for generating man-made lightning back in 2002, and then launched it into orbit disguised as a satellite. The government can now target anyone whom they wish to remove and make it look like a complete accident. This is the terrible reality under which we now live. That was Mr. K's summation of the situation during our interview. Is it truly possible to create man-made lightning? Some may doubt it, but such devices have already been developed privately, which are mainly used in developing measures for protection against lightning. However, according to Mr. K, the device owned by the American government is far more powerful and is precise enough to strike a single individual from orbit. However, in order to use this device, a small transmitter has to be placed on the target. It looks like nothing more than a small fragment of metal. American government agents place this transmitter on the target, perhaps hiding it in their belongings, perhaps directly placing it beneath the skin of the target. Mr. K himself has apparently had just such a transmitter embedded in his body in the past. He proceeded to show us the metal fragment, which had to be surgically removed, but it did indeed look like nothing more than a fragment of metal. We are under constant governmental surveillance. Our very lives are in their hands. I want more people to be aware of this chilling fact. Like those other noble whistleblowers before him, Mr. K is trying to warn the unaware masses of the governmental conspiracy that looms above them. Isn't there a call for more people to be aware of these truths and to take the brave and bold action that they so clearly demand? Hmm, a story about the government being able to generate lightning strikes. I guess that seems kind of relevant to what's been going on here. Due to the lightning strike that we had on this airplane, and what we just experienced a few minutes ago, where David's watch started to crackle, and uh, we saw some electricity... We didn't- we could not get a good look of David's watch because he's wearing, you know, these long sleeves, but if he was wearing his normal clothes, we would have seen more clearly that his, um, his watch was crackling with electricity when he saw that hulking figure down the corridor. Now, one unusual thing that's in here is a PDA. Someone forgot it? Well, let's take a look at this thing. A cell phone? No. It's a PDA. Hmm. Not a standard retail model either. That light means there's been a missed call. Hmm. Ah, I knew it was his. Oh man, a special training program for undercover operations? So a weird thing, it kind of happened, where, uh, well, I mean, I'm recording this after the rest of the playthrough that you've been watching, because when I got to this PDA in the playthrough, for some reason, I couldn't do... I couldn't access it again. This PDA contains three additional extra cases, more Philip Cheney's cases, since it's his PDA, and for some reason, when I was uh, doing the playthrough, it just wouldn't let me use the PDA. It just considered those extra cases to already be done. So I had to make a guest account on my Xbox One so I could restart the game fresh so the Xbox did not think I actually played the game before and then work my way up to here so I could get to the PDA and we could start the program. So let's do that. Hmm. Even the military uses games for training now, huh? I guess I can give it a try. Hmm. Enhance your intelligence and take your skills to the next level. The Ministry of Justice is here to support your every endeavor. Your head may be empty now, but we're going to change that. Now let's get started. Initializing the aircraft test maniac level. Alright. Time for even more answer advanced tests. Five questions correctly to complete this level. One wrong answer and you will fail instantly. How are the telephones on international? Flights connected to the ground. Well, I would like to think that we transmit the, uh, the message through subspace, but probably it's through satellites. Correct. Recently, internet connection 
services have been implemented, they also link to a satellite that connects them to the ground. What is the lifespan of a standard aircraft? Well, I'm going to guess it's going to be the longest, at least a bit longer than three hours anyway. Correct. When maintenance becomes more expensive than a replacement, aircraft are put to rest. With perfect maintenance, some can keep flying for 50 years. What's the name of the aircraft check, in which every part is disassembled? Well, it's probably not Infinity, because that would take way too long. So, I guess we'll go with the D check. Correct. Maintenance checks are ranked from A to D. The D check involves docking the aircraft for one month and takes a very long time. The time when accidents are most likely to occur is called the critical. Well, you know, I, I hope it's a lot shorter than 11 hours, because that's a lot of time to be critical. Correct. The critical 11 minutes. Accidents usually happen in the 3 minutes after takeoff and 8 before landing. This is the time when concentration and care are most required. How thick is the thickest part of the outer wall of the aircraft body? Pretty sure it's not thin enough to see through, because I've seen some planes, and I'm pretty sure you can't see right through them. Correct. Made from titanium and aluminum, it's designed to resist internal pressure. The minimum thickness is one millimeter. Surprisingly thin, isn't it? All questions in the aircraft test maniac level have been answered correctly. Congratulations. So I guess we see where Cheney got his knowledge of aircraft. just getting started. Now we will proceed to the aircraft test gate level. It will initialize as soon as you are ready. I think we're ready right now. I also like that apparently this uh, program was developed by the Ministry of Justice. I don't remember the U.S. having a Ministry of Justice, but I, I, I guess I wasn't paying that much attention in social studies class. Initializing the aircraft test gate level. Answer five questions correctly to complete this level. One wrong answer and you will fail instantly. What are fixed wings that have no propulsion called? Well, I don't know what two of these options mean, so we'll probably just go with glider. Correct. Space shuttles also land using gliding. What does VTOL stand for? Well, I, I mean, I think lemons, they probably have some vitamins in them, but probably not relevant to this. Correct. These aircraft can take off or land in narrow places, and can fly higher and longer than helicopters. They're mainly military now, but civilians model. Research is underway. What is the name given to the type of stunt flying that was popular in the 1920s? We'll just go with barnstorming, because I, I remember playing that on the Atari 2600. Correct. They pulled off all sorts of dangerous stunts, including tennis on the wings. How is a jet engine ignited? You know, aeronautics would probably be a lot cooler if it was the power of the mind. Unfortunately, it's not. Correct. You can see the heat from them when the aircraft are in the airport. They create compressed air which activates the main engine. How does a helicopter land safely if the engine is damaged? Well, I mean, we all know it's through the, pr the power of prayer, but the, these, this, uh, this godless science machine will probably not accept that as an answer. We'll just go with auto-rotation. The heathen. Correct. Downward airflow is used to turn the rotors and gently descend. It's the same principle behind a leaf that rolls down to the ground. All questions in the aircraft test gate level have been answered correctly. Congratulations, you are very well informed. But we aren't finished yet. Now, it's time for the last section of the aircraft test. The cult level will begin as soon as you are ready. 
you might notice that as I'm completing these extra cases, I am also getting additional clothes, which is usually what happens when you play through the game for the first time. You're getting lots of clothes and items from all of the extra cases that you do. Alright, I guess one more level to go. We have absolutely no reason to continue doing this, especially considering that we're hot on the trail of, uh, of Zapatero. But I, I, we can't leave the cult level unchallenged! Starting the aircraft test cult level, please answer within five seconds. Ten correct answers in a row are required. Which gas is used in modern airships? Alright, we'll go with helium. Correct. Gases that might explode are never used. How much water is used in a single flush of a passenger toilet? Uh, I kind of wish they just dumped it in the air, but they don't. Correct. Of course, the waste is stored in a tank rather than being ejected outside. What provides propulsion when a jet aircraft is on the runway? Uh, pedaling probably not enough to push that jet. Correct. A tow truck is used to go backward or move very slowly. Who made the first successful solo transatlantic air crossing in 1927? Um, I don't think it was us. We'll go with Charles Lindbergh. Correct. He also crossed the Pacific in 1931. What time is the cockpit clock set to? Well, I mean, we go all, all over the world, so let's go with GMT. Correct. The time difference is always accounted for during flights. Why is a choke used instead of brakes in order to keep the aircraft stationary? Let's, let's, let's guess temperature. Correct. If brakes were applied, the temperature would cause the discs and pads to melt. Why do cabin attendants give out candy during the flight? Well, I mean, we're all looking for love, but... When, on an, when landing an airplane, it's about cleaning the ears. Correct. Building up saliva and then swallowing is one way to clear your ears. Why is the cockpit on the second floor in a jumbo jet? Well, I mean, pilots are, are kind of better than us, but that doesn't have anything to do with this. Correct. In a cargo plane, the entire body is used as cargo space. Why do airplanes have round windows? Eh, this might just be coincidence. No one really noticed it when they were building the plane, I guess. Correct. Corners create focal points for stress, which can create cracks. Which aircraft can take off and land from a runway and go into space? Well, I mean, obviously, it can only be the space plane. Correct. We've already moved beyond the airplanes and into space. All questions correct. Congratulations. You have correctly answered all the questions. I like how the guy on the PDA looks like Cheney too. It's a very custom made PDA. And now that we your head isn't totally empty anymore. Mm -hmm. Success in the field during a dangerous undercover operation hinges entirely on your continued daily regimen of training. Remember, you are undercover until you get home. I hope we'll meet again for a different genre in the future. Wow. I ended up completing them all. This PDA, though. Don't tell me he forgot it on purpose. Well, I guess I'll find out up ahead. That was fun. In more ways than one. Hmm. Did Philip leave this here on purpose? We also see his, uh, his badge right here. Hmm. Why would he do that? But I guess we'll find out as we continue on in our, uh, in our originally recorded playthrough. So let's get back to that now that our PDA fun is over. Okay, with that, I think that we have seen everything that we need to see in this room. Except those machines. We should take a look at those. But before we do, let's talk to Olivia and... Uh, Let's see if she has anything she wants to talk about. What's wrong? Oh, well, we're in this machinery section. I guess we can talk about that. We have to open that door in order to proceed to the next section. It should open as long as electricity is being supplied to it. All right. 
Uh, and there's no electricity being supplied to the door right now, it seems. Uh, let's, uh, talk about what's been happening on this plane. We don't actually know what happened after the lightning strike because we dove into another plane at that point. So what did happen then? What happened after the lightning strike? Immediately after, the marshal suddenly took the witness hostage and shouted that he had obtained the evidence. Philip and I pursued him this far, but then I hurt my leg. All right, so Derek, who really wanted that fake eye, got it and then decided to take off with Zapatero afterwards. We still don't know why. What about Phil? What did he do at that point? So he's DEA too? Mm, yes, he's an excellent agent. Can he be trusted? What's that supposed to mean? He's made many arrests, especially in real blood cases. Mm. It's clear that, uh, that David does seem to suspect Phil. Let's ask about real blood. What does Olivia know about that? There is one thing I'd like to ask you about. One of the heavy users we arrested once said something. Real blood can awaken special powers. Sounds like a junkie, all right. But that word, he didn't say talents or sensations. He said powers. Special powers. Those words just stuck with me. Maybe they have some connection to those bizarre corpses. Hmm. It's true that people who died from real blood have died in very bizarre ways. What does Olivia think about these special powers? You really think superhuman powers exist? I don't know. But among the bodies I've seen up until now, some looked like they had been touched by the light of God while others looked as if they had been desecrated by the devil himself. It's hard for me to accept, even now. But maybe, just maybe, there do exist powers beyond the scope of human understanding. Well, I mean, maybe David Young knows a little bit about that. What if you had the power to go back in time? I wouldn't want it. The present and the future are all I care about. And what if I had that power? Huh? You? You've got to be kidding me. Well, I mean, it's no reason to expect that she would actually believe it, because who would, really? But we have an extra case here. Olivia seems concerned about something. What is that? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I've got you watching my back, and you're still keeping things from me? Look, I'm not hiding anything. Then what is it? It just seems so pointless that I was hesitant to bring it up. Now you're practically begging me to show some interest. <sighs> I see what you mean. Just please don't get mad. Out with it. Okay. What's the capital of Brazil? Sao Paulo, right? No, that's incorrect. Okay, Rio de Janeiro. That's the old capital. <sighs> Does it really matter what the capital of Brazil is? Not really, I guess. But I just can't get it out of my mind. It's making me quite upset. All right, I mean... Now she's got me thinking about it. How can I expect her to watch my back when she's worried about something like that? If only there was a world map down here. If only there was. Well, I mean, it's bothering Olivia, so I guess we should try to figure this out before we go any further. Now, if there was a world map somewhere, where would it be? Well, I mean, I guess we could try going back into the cargo hold. And yeah, something has appeared. It's a glowy. Let's get that glowy, and now we have the world map. Let's turn right back around and give Olivia the answer to her question. And we should probably tell her that Philip is not going to pick up uh, on that call, because his PDA is right in the back room. He does not have it. What's wrong? Here you go. The capital of Brazil is Brasilia. Here, check out the map. Oh, that's it! Brasilia! After achieving independence, they moved the capital to promote growth inland. Why couldn't I remember that? Thank you. I feel so much better. Glad to hear it.
There's nothing as annoying as a memory you just can't quite recall. Trust me, I feel your pain. If there's anything else I can help you with, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not really sure how to say this. No need to worry. As you can see, even without my memories, I'm still alive. No, that's not what I was talking about. There's actually something else I'm having trouble remembering. Uh, uh, go on. Timothy Dalton. He starred as 007 in two films, License to Kill and... What? Huh? Timothy Dalton was James Bond in only two movies, and I simply can't remember what the other one was. Oh, the 007 series is my Bible. How could I forget something so basic? So the DEA hires 007 nuts. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I did say I would help him. I'll tell her the answer if I figure it out. I could always check a movie magazine at home. <laughs> I suppose we can, and even though this doesn't seem like the most relevant thing right now, since it is only the past to David Young, we can go back and get that information at any time, can't we? Yeah, we can. All right, don't mind us, Olivia. We're just going to float up out of the plane. We're going to head to our uh, our little TV area, and we're going to see if we can find anything that's going to let us know about what movies Timothy Dalton was in. Well, rather, what the other movie is that Olivia just can't remember. All right. Ah. It's a new item at the door. I mean, again, it's not going to actually be an item. Because I got all the items. But it's going to be, you know, some health or something. Oh, got a lollipop. Someone just delivered a random lollipop to the door. That's very nice. All right, I think I see a glowy. Let's head to our stack of magazines over by the TV. Yeah, got that movie magazine, and it's going to tell us exactly what Olivia wants to know. I guess, though, uh, before we go back, we can talk to Kaysen. See if he has any lunch made up for us. David, looking after yourself is part of your job. Oh, look at the time. Okay, okay, leave it to me. It'll be a nice change of pace. What'd you expect? You've been keeping me on my toes for years now. <laughs> okay, Mom. I can work with Mom. Now go wash your hands, Davy boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know what Boston's most common crime in recent years has been? Uh, if you want a serious answer, I'd say... Kids breaking into cars and stealing stuff, right? Yeah, a lot of people have stuff taken from their cars. But that's not number one. How about... Stealing food from people's plates? Uh, if only Boston were so peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is muggings. Thefts of portable music players were the most cited. Music players? The latest ones are very popular. They sell for a lot at pawn shops and for even more on internet auctions. There are better steal than cash? <laughs> uh, headphones are a dead giveaway as to who's carrying. And it's much safer than grabbing a wallet that may only hold 20 bucks. 
This is the age of the rational mugger. Things are safer than they were in the 90s, but there's still crime out there. Well, that's why we need men like you. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? I'm killing myself trying to wipe out crime. No. But I'm out of work if I succeed. What better death than starvation due to a lack of crime? Don't overthink it. Just do what's right. Deliver justice. Right after I became a detective, you said those words to me. Uh, just a little conversation about the state of crime in Boston. Let's see what Kaysen's report has to say about it. Crimes within the city of Boston are on the decrease. However, while the overall crime rate has fallen for the eighth successive year, rapes, attempted rapes, and crimes of violence against women and children have been on the increase. By region, Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan account for around 70% of homicides, with the intensification of the gang war in these districts leading to deaths during the ensuing gun battles. The instability of these regions is a serious problem faced by all of Boston. The BPD Special Ops Unit and Gang Unit are working together in an ongoing operation to restrict the gangs. A state of alert is being maintained in the particularly heavy affected areas of B2, B3, and C11. For the three crimes stated above, the total stats for 2012 stood at 58 homicides, 273 rapes, but 13,234 muggings, making them a far more prevalent threat. This trend has been continuing since the start of the 2000s. 2013 stats are still being calculated, but early figures suggest that the same trend is present this year. In recent years, crimes targeting high-end mobile terminals have been on the increase, with measures such as keeping the device out of sight when on public transport proving effective in helping to prevent such crimes. Furthermore, there has been an increase in reports of the so-called knockout game, involving random attacks against pedestrians and cases of robbery, which suggest a growing trend, and considerable care needs to be paid to nip these problems in the bud. BFS needs to perform tactical patrols and work to restrict the growth of these crimes. Mm. All right, so maybe a bit more of a, a bit more of a morose file to read than what we usually do yet from Kaysen. Kaysen looks like that he is continuing on his investigation, whatever that might be, because we still don't actually know what that is now, do we? All right, let's head down here. We already saw that envelope. I think, though, we did not see the one right here. Yep, oh, Amanda, you just stood in the way while I was doing that. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess if we're here, you know, we're, we're already talking to Amanda. We might as well uh, see if we can, see if we can buy some stuff. We saw in episode one that there were three extra cases we could do with Amanda to increase her friendship rating with us. Well, I mean, I guess we, I, guess, I guess that's that. I mean, we just were able to complete that with just one uh, gift. Um, I guess let's do it again. Let's buy this cat house. It's not going to go up the whole way with just one gift this time. We're also going to need, let's see, let's buy a cat catcher. And let's buy some dry cat food. No. 
All right, that's number two. Let's finish this off. And max out our friendship with Amanda. The cat girl who is now currently also, uh, also a dog girl. And let's finish that up, let's see, with, uh, with a ball of yarn. And that is our final extra case with Amanda. Once again, we've gotten all the items that we could get from her, so we're not getting a unique item this time. Uh, but yeah, that's what we get. We get a little dance. And the knowledge that we are as good of friends with Amanda as we could be. So now that we've done that, I guess I'm going to wait for her to... She's probably going to get up on that. Yep, there we go. All right, let me, let's me let uh, see if we can open this up. And once we do that, now I think that we'll be able to notice this envelope. Right there. Yep, there it is. All right, that's once again one of Little Peggy's letters. Let's see which is the next one to see. David, you look worried lately, and I'm sorry I haven't been totally honest with you. Please don't worry. The only reason I haven't told you is because I know everything will be all right. Yesterday morning, when I was in the bathtub, I noticed the water tinged red with blood. I sense it's my disease coming back. Last night I lay in bed with my hand on my stomach, feeling the baby kick. It's true, I'm a little afraid, but I'm optimistic. With you by my side, making me laugh, it keeps me strong. The doctor told me that in cases like mine, many women agree to terminate the pregnancy for the sake of their health. But this baby is a gift. I smile every day because I know she's on her way into the world. I already love her more than anything, and I know someday soon, you and I are going to be holding her together. Love from your lucky clover, Little Peggy Oldman, October 16th, 2010. Hmm. Something more about Peggy's disease, which we really don't know much about. But, uh, it looked like from that letter that maybe it was something to be concerned about. We still don't really know a whole lot of of the details of whatever this is that Peggy had. In any case, let's head back to the airplane. Since now we have the information that Olivia wanted about Timothy Dalton. Doesn't seem especially important right now. Especially considering that we know that, uh... Peggy had some sort of, uh... Some sort of disease that... Hmm... That maybe need, was something that needed attention, and that the doctors couldn't really seem to do anything about. But we have to get that we have to get that out of our mind for right now. That's not important right now. That's the past. What is important right now is Timothy Dalton. All right. Let's give Olivia... Something the matter? Let's give her the goods. Your question? About Dalton? Yeah. His two 007 movies were... Licensed to Kill... And The Living Daylights. Oh my god! That's it! The Living Daylights. 
The most realistic James Bond film. That's a quote from Princess Diana. See? It's even got the royal seal of approval. So that's everything, right? Now you can concentrate on the investigation? Oh, uh, wait. There's more? This really, really doesn't matter, but... Come on, spill it. If it doesn't matter, then we should just get it out of the way. Okay, here goes. What's the difference between bourbon and scotch? Bourbon whiskey is made in bourbon, Kentucky. While scotch whiskey is made in Scotland. Wow, okay. <laughs> Both of them are whiskey. It's common sense. Okay. Then, what's the difference between a cafe au lait and a cafe latte? Oh, jeez. It's okay if you don't know. I'll just look it up on the internet later. No, I, I know this one too. I just need a little time. That's a fairly common question. I've even discussed it in the past with Teddy. It was around the time we got a cappuccino machine for the kitchen. Alright, so maybe we just have to go back. Yeah, maybe we just have to end the dive and go back to the apartment and get the information that Olivia needs. Alright, let's go back up to, to the kitchen. Let, let's just head back to the counter. Back to that cappuccino machine, and we can see it. We can see it over there. There's the glowy. How to make good coffee. We have it. Now we have what should be the, the rest of what Olivia wants. Of what she feels she needs to get the cobwebs out of her head and remember everything she needs to. But you know, I think that now that we, now that we have everything we need there, maybe it's time for a change of clothes. Because now I think the investigation time is over. Now I think it's time for action. And if we're going to be a man of action... We're going to need an outfit that's appropriate for it. So let's get rid of the FBI FBI suit. Because that's for, you know, that's talking, that's giving in interrogations and all that. We need someone, we need someone who is more used to going into action and, and getting things done. And I think that means that we need to get into our spy fiction gear. And as for facial hair, well, if, if I remember right, I don't believe Billy Bishop had any facial hair at all. So, if we're going to be a proper phantom agent, we have to have the right facial hair. And also, everyone else does have their own spy fiction stuff as well. Amanda's, I think, is just a normal Enigma soldier. It's not that much. Uh, I would have preferred her getting just full-out Scarface cosplay. With the full arm cannon and everything. But no, she doesn't have that. It's just the uh, standard Enigma grunt. Olivia has Sheila's spy fiction costume. And Forrest Kaysen, of course, is dressed like Forrest Kaysen from spy fiction. So, okay, I think that we're dressed to go. We're dressed like people of action. We're ready to get things done and solve this investigation. And we'll do that when we come back with Let's Play D4. We're gonna head back to that plane, we are going to give Olivia what she wants, and then we're gonna get to the bottom of all this. I'll see you then. What happened after the lightning strike? Olivia. Don't move. How did you get down here? Just who the hell are you? Just a lost little boy. The name's David Young. I'm looking for a friend who's gone missing. Now who the hell are you? You think I'll buy that? I'm a private detective, David Young, formerly a detective with the BPD. 
I used to wear a badge too. You think I'll buy that? <laughs> That's up to you. Telling you no. Are you finished? and they will fail instantly. How are the telephones on international? Flights connected to the ground. Yes, it would be nice if such technology was real. Incorrect, but space might be a hint. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Incorrect. The range is too long for such conventional methods. Think of something that can cover a wider range. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. What is the lifespan of a standard aircraft? Incorrect. That doesn't give new aircraft enough time to pay for themselves. Consider the financial risks. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Yes. Be sure to eat your lunch. Buy then so that it doesn't spoil. Incorrect. It's longer than you might think. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. What's the name of the aircraft check, in which every part is disassembled? That will be $9.99. Incorrect. Take into account that checks have ranks assigned to them. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Maintenance would never end in that case. Try bringing it down a little. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. The time when accidents are most likely to occur is called the critical. Incorrect. That's too long. We're talking about a focused period of time. Something shorter. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Critical hit. Aircraft receives 1,000 hit point damage. Incorrect. We're talking about time here. Game over. Don't 
give up. Trying how thick is the thickest part of the outer wall of the aircraft body. Would you fancy a peek inside? Incorrect. It's thin, but within the boundaries of common sense. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Incorrect. This isn't an armored aircraft, so there's no need to go overboard. Consider that aircraft are kept as light as possible. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. What are fixed wings that have no propulsion called? Face reality. Man cannot fly on it. Look more closely at the answers. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Incorrect. Look more closely at the answers. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. What does VTOL stand for? Lemons are packed with vitamins. Incorrect. Famous aircraft of this type include the Austrian Harrier. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Incorrect. How does that even make any sense? Famous aircraft of this type include the Austrian Harrier. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. What is the name given to the type of stunt flying that was popular in the 1920s? Sleeping with the fishes, incorrect. This term was featured in a different kind of movie. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Incorrect. Might be useful in a meeting, but we are talking about an aerial show here. It sounds very similar. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. How is a jet engine ignited? massive waste to add secondary engines just for ignition you can see the heat from these things when the aircraft are in the airport game over don't give up try again yes because our world is full of people with psychic powers incorrect you can see the heat from these things when the aircraft are in the airport game over don't give up try again how does a helicopter land safely if the engine is damaged. You can meet them if you do that. Incorrect. The motor isn't the only thing that rotates the rotors. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. Incorrect. Sounds feasible, perhaps. But there's no such thing. The motor isn't the only thing that rotates the rotors. Game over. Don't give up. Try again. How much water is used in a single flush of a passenger toilet? Sorry. Incorrect. Game over. Don't give up. 